measuring how strong of an acid something is. But I think pH is better thought of as a simple way to manage the really big, unwieldy numbers that we deal with as chemists. We know that water molecules are always moving around. They bounce around and roll past each other. And sometimes when they do that, and two water molecules will come and they'll hit each other with enough force, what ends up happening is one of these little arms, one of the bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen will break off. What you have then is this hydrogen <clears throat> plus one ion floating around freely and a hydroxide ion floating around freely. That hydrogen plus one ion can sit on the negative end of another water molecule. We told you before in the past that we'd call that hydronium. And this happens in water quite naturally. We call this the self-ionization of water. Periodically, as water molecules bounce around, they're going to smack into each other, and every once in a while, they're going to hit, and one of them's going to break. In pure water, 100% pure water, we're going to find that 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles of water molecules have broken apart to form hydrogens and hydroxide ions, or hydronium and hydroxide ions, if we want to think of that hydrogen ion as sitting on the water. Because the hydrogen and hydroxide amounts are the same, they are equal to each other, we describe that solution as being neutral. So let's think about that reaction. I'm going to simplify it down to being just water breaks down to make hydrogen and hydroxide. It's the same reaction as you'll see sometimes written as two water molecules break down to make hydronium and hydroxide. They're equivalent ways of writing the same thing. So here's the simpler version. We know that we're going to have an equal amount of hydroxide ions and hydrogen plus one ions. What happens if I add more hydrogen ions or if I add more hydroxide ions to this equilibrium situation? Well, we know the Chatelier's principle is going to apply here. The equilibrium is going to shift in a way to restore the original conditions. If I add more hydrogen, that extra hydrogen will react with some of the hydroxides to make more waters. Same if I were to add more hydroxides. The excess hydroxide would react with the hydrogens to make more waters. It's going to do this until the equilibrium situation is restored. If we have in regular plain water, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 hydrogens and 1 times 10 to the minus 7 hydroxides, the equilibrium for this reaction, hydrogen times hydroxide, would work out to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14. This number is called the ion product constant for water. And it is a constant that we have to know. We call it Kw. Again, the reason we're not putting it over the concentration of water is we never include the concentration of liquid water in a solution. We're going to ask you to remember this formula quite a bit. Kw is hydrogen times hydroxide. And remember the value, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Because this number is going to ground us through the rest of the unit for all the math that we're going to be doing. Now, of course, not all solutions are neutral. If I have an acidic solution, the amount of hydrogen is going to be greater than hydroxide. We'll have more hydrogen ions. If I have a basic, sometimes called alkaline, solution, I'll end up having more hydroxides than I do hydrogens. But either way, the amount of hydrogen times the amount of hydroxide is always equal to the Kw. They always have to multiply together to give us 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, we're getting used to working with these numbers written in scientific notation, but not everybody works with these numbers a lot. And they can be kind of unwieldy, and they can be kind of meaningless to a lot of people if you're not familiar with them. So a more convenient way to express these numbers is by using something called pH or POH. On your calculators, you will have a button called log. Log is a way of expressing great big numbers or very, very small numbers by imagining what they would look like in the form of times 10 to the power of. So pH then will be the negative of the log of our hydrogen concentration 
and pOH then would be the negative of the log of our hydroxide concentration. If you have a calculator handy, go ahead and grab it. Pause the video and grab it now. Once you have your calculator, find your log button, your LOG button. Now there's a natural log button as well, LN. We're not going to worry about that, but I want the base 10 one, LOG. I want you to take the log of, and in brackets put, 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Again, use your EXP button, 1X minus 7, and see what you get. Now, I'm showing it written in both forms here. We'll always write things in this form of 1 times 10 to the minus 7, but again, calculators speak slightly different language than we actually use in writing and in speaking. A calculator will probably ask you to type it in this way. Please don't write it this way. Um, writing it this way would be the equivalent of you guys saying something funny and me actually saying the words LOL. It wouldn't make sense. But I want to clarify the difference between how we write something, what we mean to say, and what a calculator shows us. Either way, when we do this and enter it into our calculator, we're going to get a value of minus 7. Now, dropping that negative sign, because remember, pH is the negative of the log of minus 7, we end up with pH of 7. So in pure water, the pH of pure water is 7. This is where it comes from, because the amount of hydrogen ions we have is 1 times 10 to the minus 7. This is a much easier way for us to think about the amount of hydrogen that we have in water. Interestingly enough, because we have the exact same amount of hydroxide, the pOH of pure water would also be 7. So if we try this math scale out with numbers greater than 10 to the minus 7, so maybe 10 to the minus 6 or 10 to the minus 4.2, we end up with pHs that approach 0, smaller and smaller and smaller pHs. pHs of 0 to 7 would be acidic because it means there's more hydrogen ions than there are in pure water. Trying this value out with um, amounts of hydrogen less than 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 10, or 10 to the minus 2.3, we're going to get values of 7 up to 14. Okay, And the bigger the value that we get gives us basic values, pHs from 7 up to 14 would be basic solutions. The more hydrogen we have, the smaller the pH, it's an acid. The less hydrogen we have, the bigger the pH, it is a base. This square is going to be really helpful to you over the next few days as we practice converting between hydrogen concentration and pH or hydroxide concentration and pOH. We already know that we can hit the log button and drop the negative sign to move from pH, from hydrogen, I should say, to pH. Same with hydroxide. If I have hydroxide and I want pOH, I can hit the log button and drop the negative sign. Going in reverse, we would use the anti-log, sometimes called the 10 to the x button that we have on our calculator. It's the reverse of pH, and it's typically attached to the same button on your calculator. You're going to see it usually right above that button, and it's usually you hit second function and then your log button to get to it. And that allows us to go backwards from pH back to hydrogen or pOH back to hydroxide. We've also talked about the fact that if I know that hydrogen times hydroxide gives me my Kw, and that Kw will always be 1 times 10 to the minus 14, as long as I have either hydrogen or hydroxide, I can get to the other one by dividing from the Kw. Now, a consequence of this mathematically is, on the pH side, if I have the pH and I add it or go plus pOH, I will get to the number 14. So, to convert from hydrogen to pH or from hydroxide to pOH, what we need to remember is log. We're going to log our concentration of our hydrogen or hydroxide and then drop the negative sign to get to the P, the pH or the pOH. In reverse, we're going to 
take the anti-log of the negative of our pH. Remember, we drop the negative sign on the way in. We'll have to take, put it back in to go backwards again. We'll do a couple of practices with this, not to worry. So remember, the connection between hydrogen and hydroxide is going to be Kw. Kw, the value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14, is always hydrogen times hydroxide. Since this number can't change, as long as we have one of these values, it's easy to calculate the other one. And finally, the connection between pH and pOH is addition. If I add my pH and my pOH, I always have to get to the number 14. So again, as long as I have one of these, I can get to the other one by subtracting from 14. We're going to want to keep this little square handy as we solve problems involving pH, pOH, concentration of H, and concentration of OH. Take a look at this for an example. We have a situation, calculate the pH for a solution where we know the concentration of hydroxide. I have this number right here on the square, 4 times 10 to the minus 11. I'm here. The question asks us to get to pH. They're asking us to get to here. Now, we have two directions we can go, and it doesn't matter which way you choose to work your way around the square. In this example, I'm going to go up to hydrogen first by using my KW expression, and then I'm going to go from hydrogen over to pH by using my log button. I could just as easily have gone the other way, and either way you should get the same number. So the first thing we want to do is consider that Kw is equal to hydrogen times hydroxide. But what I want to get to is hydrogen, so let's rearrange that formula. Rearranging to solve for hydrogen then, the concentration of hydrogen will be equal to the Kw divided by the hydroxide concentration, which translates to Kw of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 11, and that gives us a value of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. We've gone from hydroxide to hydrogen, but we're still not there. We now need to solve for pH. Following our diagram, pH then will be the negative of the log of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So in our calculators, we're going to find the log of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4, and it's going to give us a negative value. And then we're going to drop the negative sign. That's what I mean by the negative of. And we get a value of 3.6. So in the solution, we found out that our pH is 3.6. 3.6 is an acidic pH. That tells me there should be more hydrogen than we have hydroxide. Taking a look, hydroxide was 4 times 10 to the minus 11. Hydrogen, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. We do indeed have more hydrogen than hydroxide. So our answer makes sense. The nice thing about this unit is your answers should make sense. You should go, am I working with an acid? My numbers should reflect that for an acid. pH is less than 7. If I'm working with a base, my numbers should reflect the values for a base of pH is more than 7. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we're given a pH of 3.7. We're going to be at this point on the square. They want us to get to hydrogen. They want us to get to this point on the square. So we're going to be moving in this direction. We're going to be moving from pH to the concentration of H, which means I'm going to have to use the anti-log of the negative of the pH. So this would look like the anti-log of negative 3.7. If you don't put the negative sign back in, you're not going to get the right numbers. Remember, we drop the negative sign on the way forward, put it back in on the way back. We get a value of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, a lot of your calculators are going to have your anti-log button written as 10 to the x button. So another way to express this, and it's quite correct to do so, is to say that the concentration of hydrogen will be 10 to the power of the negative of the pH, 10 to the power of negative 3.7. 
Again, it's another way to express the same thing, and we're going to get the value of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 4. We're going to need to spend some time practicing working our way around this pH square in order to get comfortable with its use. This is a really big deal, guys, as far as any of you considering taking chemistry in university. I want you to practice this and get good at it in your own rights. So there's a couple of places that you can go to get a lot of practice. First off, one of the textbook, chapter 18, pages 650 to 655. There's a few questions there that will give you a lot of practice, starting at one corner of the square and working your way around to the other corners. Also, a few sheets later on, past where we've already been working, you'll find one called Solving for pH, and there's 10 questions there for us to practice. So I'm going to give us a day or two to practice this skill set, and then we're going to add on to it and see how, what we can do with this information. 